Welcome, members of Curtis Road Christian Church. Welcome, guests. Please turn with you in your Bibles to the book of 1 Kings, chapter 21. 1 Kings, chapter 21. This is a story about King Ahab and Naboth's vineyard. The Bible says, before we get to the end of this chapter, that there was nobody like Ahab. Now, occasionally in the, in, in the Bible you see this, those words, there was nobody like this person, sometimes for a good reason, but in this case, for a very bad reason. There was nobody as bad as Ahab. Ahab sold himself to do wickedness in the sight of the Lord, because Jezebel, his wife, stirred him up. Jezebel incited Ahab to do wicked things, things that a king of Israel would know better. Ahab behaved himself very abominably in following idols, according to all the, the Amorites had done. Now, the Amorites were one of those nations that the Israelites were supposed to drive out of the land of Canaan. But because of Ahab, the Israelites were being just as bad as the people that, they, that had come, come before them. And Ahab was part of the reason, because he was so wicked. He sold himself to do what was, what was wrong or was evil in God's sight. But if we turn back to verse 4, we come to a day when Ahab wouldn't eat. He wouldn't eat because something was eating him. He wouldn't eat, and all the servants could see it. Queen Jezebel could see it, and she said, Why is your spirit so sullen? In verse 5. Why is your spirit so sullen that you eat no food? Now, if we looked back a little bit earlier in the chapter, we'd see what was bothering him. He says it freely again, and, and, and several times in, in this chapter we see the same thing repeated twice for emphasis. He says what the reader already knows. I approached our neighbor, Naboth, the Jezreelite, because that was the, the city they were in, Jezreel. And I told him, give me your vineyard for money. It's right next to my house. Give me your vineyard for money and sell it to me, or, or if it pleases you. I will trade you your vineyard for a better vineyard than that. But Naboth had said to Ahab, The Lord forbid that I should give the inheritance of my fathers to you. And so Ahab was upset. His attempt at eminent domain had been turned down flat. And here he was king, but Naboth had been very clear, I am not going to do it. I'm not going to break the law of Moses just to get a better vineyard or to just get money from you, King Ahab? The answer is no, it's not for sale. But when Jezebel heard that, she said, You now exercise authority over Israel. That is, Ahab, you're the king. Where I come from, the king, you know, he's king. You don't have to bargain with your subjects. Of course, according to the law of Moses, Ahab wouldn't be the king, as much as rather the Lord should be king. But Jezebel said, You are now the one who exercises authority in Israel. Get up. Eat food. Let your heart be cheerful. I will give you the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. Well, Ahab didn't ask any questions. He didn't say, really, how are you going to do that? You won't break any laws, will you? You won't incite God again, will you? Because we're already no, not, in, not in, on good terms. Ahab asked no questions, apparently. Jezebel wrote letters in Ahab's name, sealed them with his seal, and sent the letters to the elders and the nobles who were dwelling in the city with Naboth. She wrote in the letters, saying, Proclaim a fast. Seat Naboth with high honor among the people. And seat two men, scoundrels. Make sure they're scoundrels. Set two men, scoundrels, before him to bear witness against him, saying, You have blasphemed God and the king. Now Jezebel apparently knew the law of God well enough to know that two men would be required. Then she says, take him out and stone him. 
that he may die. And so, the men of his city, the elders and nobles who were inhabitants of his city, when they received the letter, they sent word back to Jezebel saying, No, Jezebel, this is the nation of God. God forbid that we should do such a wicked thing to condemn the innocent. If only that's what it said. If only there had been somebody in the city willing to stand up to Queen Jezebel. But there was not. Nobody stood up. Everybody was intimidated. Everybody thought, and you know how gentle and compassionate Queen Jezebel is if you don't do what she says. Everybody played it along. Nobody stood up. Not one. And so, at the end of the day, in verse 14, they sent to Jezebel saying, Naboth has been stoned and is dead. Her orders had been followed exactly. And it came to pass, when Jezebel heard that Naboth had been stoned and was dead, Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, Naboth the Jezreelite, which he refused to give you for money, for Naboth is not alive, but dead. Ahab didn't ask any questions. Naboth was dead. His sons weren't going to be a problem. We've seen in another passage that they too had been killed. And so he went down to that vineyard to take possession. Ah, he thought, well, this is the best of both worlds. Now I've got this nice vineyard. I didn't even have to pay for it. I was willing to pay for it. But as it turns out, being yoked to Jezebel, look how well it's turned out. Now I have the vineyard. Ah, life is good. But then, in verse 17, the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Arise, go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, who lives in Samaria. There he is, in the vineyard of Naboth, where he has gone down to take possession of it. You shall speak to him, saying, Thus says the Lord, Have you murdered and also taken possession? And ye shall speak to him, saying, Thus says the Lord, In the place where dogs licked the blood of Naboth, dogs shall lick your blood, even yours. The Bible doesn't describe how they met. But it says in verse 20, So Ahab said to Elijah, Have you found me, O my enemy? It's a strange opening phrase when you meet somebody. You found me, my enemy. Ahab knows something that I don't want to hear, I'm about to hear. He doesn't have to be told. Something improper has happened to get him this vineyard. He doesn't have to know every detail about the letters. Perhaps he has maintained plausible deniability about the letters. Somehow the vineyard just showed up ready to be claimed. And there was no more family to claim it. And so, it belongs to the crown. Elijah comes from the real king. He says, I have found you, because you sold yourself to do evil in the sight of the Lord. Behold, God says, verse 21, Behold, I will bring calamity upon you, for I will take away your posterity, and I will cut off from Ahab Every male in Israel, both bond and free, I will make your house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and like the house of Bashan, the son of Ahijah, because of the provocation with which you have provoked me to anger and made Israel sin. Now here Elijah is not saying, you made, you made me, Elijah, angry. He's saying, God says, you made him angry. You, Ahab, have done a lot of bad things. And he had. But through this act of covetousness, through this miscarriage of justice, of taking all the things that were good and twisting them to, 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 to make something wrong, God says, you have provoked me. 
And concerning Jezebel, the Lord also spoke in verse 23, The dogs shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. The dogs shall eat whoever belongs to Ahab and dies in the city, and the birds of the air shall eat whoever dies in the field. I haven't already been told that he was a goner. But he couldn't look toward a, a nice regal funeral now. He and his queen would die violently. His whole family, all the males, would be wiped out, leaving no heir to the throne. There was no one like Ahab. But even Ahab, when he heard the sentence from Elijah. In verse 27, it was, so it was when Ahab heard these words that he tore his clothes and put sackcloth on his body and fasted and lay in sackcloth and went about mourning. It wasn't just what Ahab had done. It was what he had done. He hadn't asked a question about, wow, how did I get this vineyard? What happened to Naboth? He just knew that what he had coveted was now his. Now, it probably wouldn't have taken much for Ahab to know exactly what had happened. But he had done enough to be guilty. Just as David had been guilty of the blood of Uriah, Ahab was guilty indirectly of the blood of Naboth. But even Ahab... Even wicked King Ahab, he's so, he's so wicked that Ahab might as well be his middle name. His first name was Wicked, no, Wicked Ahab. But even him, when he heard the sentence that he was now under, he went about in mourning. And God responded. The word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Do you see how Ahab has humbled himself before me? Because he has humbled himself before me, I will not bring the calamity in his days. In the days of his son, I will bring the calamity upon his house. God's sentence came to pass. But even in this passage, in which we see the truth that God will not allow the guilty to go unpunished. Even here we see a glimpse of the mercy of God. That God is responsive to those who acknowledge their guilt. The same God is our God. The God who vindicated Naboth, even though to, to all eyes, we would say, Naboth, he's dead, which he is. But we'd also say Naboth is not the guilty party. Naboth has been, been vindicated and we look forward to a day of judgment when one day we'll, we'll meet Naboth. Ahab will also see. We won't see Ahab with God's people. There was nobody like Ahab. As we now come to the Lord's table, let us consider where we want to be on the day of judgment. Ahab, to all lies king and powerful, or Naboth, killed unjustly, but innocent. Let's be on the side of Naboth. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, today we're reminded of the consequences of the sins of, of covetousness, of rebellion, of defiance. But even with the example of Ahab the wicked, we're reminded of your readiness to extend grace. As we come to your table, help us to remember that our sins are covered. Because you are God, justify the ungodly. Through your Son, Jesus Christ. In his mighty name I pray. Amen. Lord Jesus, on the same night, in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do 
in remembrance of me. In the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it, in your rooms of me. The service is now concluded. Go in peace.